Hey everybody, this is Pastor Weeks coming at you live. I know it's been a minute since I've done a live video, but here I am again. It's Tuesday. I hope you're having a blessed, blessed day. Y'all, we have such an incredible weekend coming up ahead of us. Don't forget our Palm Sunday activities. This Sunday, there is no Sunday school, no cr Crossroads Cafe or fellowship time. We're starting service at 10 a.m. And the service is in the field. It's an outdoor service. And then following the service at 1130, we're going to have a huge community-wide block party, a lot of fun, Easter egg hunt, uh, Easter bunny will be there, all of it. But we want you first to come and worship with us for Palm Sunday. Bring your palms if you want to, to wave as we worship together. Um, also, if you want to bring a comfortable lawn chair or some chair that you like to sit in, uh, feel free to bring that, set it out in the field and worship the Lord with us. You might want to bring an umbrella just in case the sun is out. Uh, it will help you to stay a little bit cooler in the shade. But, uh, I, you know, in our daily reading, we're reading through the New Testament in uh, 2024, reading together, uh, a bunch of us from Crossroads. And today is a reading in Matthew chapter 19. And as I got to reading this chapter, you know, it's interesting to me because in the first part of this chapter, Jesus is questioned um, so that he can be tricked into giving an answer that they could bring accusation against him. And they brought a question about divorce and remarriage and what's right, what's wrong. And Jesus spelled some things out for them concerning that. And then in, in the last part of it, is the story about the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and asked him what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus laid out a command for him. He couldn't abide by it and he walked away very sad. But what's interesting to me is sandwiched in between those two issues that Jesus addressed are two verses or, or three verses that are talking about children. And in those verses, verses 13 through 15, um, the scripture says that the children came to Jesus, they wanted to be around Jesus. They wanted to know who Jesus was. They wanted to talk to Jesus. They wanted to spend time with Jesus. And I got to thinking about that. Man, I wish that every believer in the church had that kind of desire to be with Jesus, to just spend time with Jesus, to sit at his feet, to talk to him, to uh, hear him teach and feel the love that emanates from him. And But the, here's the children trying to gather around Jesus. And while they're trying to get to Jesus, the disciples are trying to push them away. The disciples are saying, stop it, your children. You need to go away. Leave the master alone. He doesn't have time for you. And you know, sometimes we do that to kids, don't we? We push them away. We think you don't understand. You're too young to understand. You're too immature to understand. So we give them technology to distract them rather than engaging with them. We give them coloring books and crayons and toys and tell them to go play rather than engaging with them and bringing them to Jesus. We take them on Sundays everywhere else, to theme parks, to parties, everywhere else, instead of bringing them to Jesus. And, and in this passage of scripture, it's interesting to me because Jesus rebuked his disciples and said, let these children come to me. Let them get to me, for as such is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus, when the children came near him, he laid his hands on them and began to bless them and pray over them and speak good things over their life. He began to speak life into them. And I got to thinking about, you know, so many times we grumble and complain if children are in the sanctuary during church and they get loud or they, they can't sit still or they, they start crying and we turn our head and give a, a mean look. But I'm telling Telling you, I would rather have a sanctuary full of rambunctious ADHD can't sit still kids that are moving and grooving all of the time than, than a bunch of dead adults who don't know how to worship. <laughs> Listen, and I'm not saying Crossroads is full of dead adults. We've got some great worshipers at Crossroads. But my point is, so many times we've relegated the children to just sit still and be quiet and don't interrupt and don't come to the master and you're too young to understand about Jesus. And, and the reality is their hearts are ripe for a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
at Crossroads right now, we're doing children's church every second and fourth Sunday. But the first Sunday and the third Sunday of the month, we want we have the kids in the sanctuary with us because I feel like it's important for our kids to watch us worship, to know how we worship, to know how we give, to hear the word of God from the pastor so that they understand this is my pastor as well and I can go to him and he will speak with me, he will teach me, he will instruct me, he will pray with me. I think it's important for our kids to know how to conduct themselves in the worship service and, and how to reverence the presence of the Lord. So that's why we're kind of doing that right now. For a while, we were having children's church every Sunday, but we've, we've moved over the last month to doing it the second Sunday and the fourth Sunday and having the kids in service with us the first Sunday and the third Sunday. And y'all, this is a strategic move. It's not because we don't want the kids to have fun in children's church or that we want them to be bored in big church. It's because we want them to see and understand the reverence of the Lord and how their parents and other adults worship the Lord, how they pray in the altars, how they seek the face of Jesus. I think it's important. And so we're doing some very strategic things over this next year to draw some children in and to, to bring some children to crossroads. One of my, I, I've shared this with a couple of groups in the church that I've, I've spoken to, ministered to. It's something that I shared with our pastoral staff. My goal for this year, by the end of this year, my goal for Crossroads is to have more people under the age of 40 in our church on Sundays and Wednesdays than people over the age of 40. Now, I still want a lot of people over the age of 40 because I love y'all. I am one of you. But I want to see a shift in that we are drawing in young families and children and young adults who are hungry for Jesus Christ. And so this coming weekend is one of those times, one of those outreach times, and one of those evangelism times where we're ministering not only to the kids with Easter egg hunts and games and all of that. And I know people think, oh, that's just for fun. But the reality is we're gonna be ministering to families as a whole on this weekend. And I'm so excited about this because we're going to have moms and dads and kids on our campus that may not normally come to Crossroads. And we have these moments in their life that they have come and we get to love on them. We get to share Jesus with them. We get to have fun with them. We get to bond with them. And this is the greatest thing that we can do in building community. So I want to encourage you, even if you can't come out and volunteer to work at the block party on that day, be in prayer for these events. Be in prayer for our Palm Sunday outdoor worship service. Be in prayer for our extreme block party for the community that will follow on Sunday afternoon. It's going to be great. So let the children come to Jesus. I love you today. God bless you. Take care.